Welcome, Timmy. How are you today, my boy? Oh, okay, I guess. Oh, why the long face, Timmy? My mommy says I can't go ride bikes with my friend Billy after school. Oh, Timmy, it sounds to me like your negotiation skills aren't quite up to snuff. Either that or your opinion doesn't actually matter to your mother, I suppose. I think that's it, Mr. C. I don't know what I can do about it. Well, Timmy, as with any sticky situation, you should look to the business world for inspiration. Japers, I don't understand, Mr. C. Well, let me illustrate the point for you with a graph. Holy pies and bars, what's a graph? Well, have you ever seen a picture of a bunch of squiggly lines that either go up or down depending on various measurements of various different criteria? I guess so. Well, that's a graph. Now then, take a look at this graph. In this graph, we have a representation of the support the American people have for any given topic. Let's say on the left, you have a position supported by zero American citizens. Like kicking puppies? Well, I suppose that would be over there somewhere in that general vicinity. But over here to the right, why, that's an opinion supported by everyone in the entire country. Are you with me, Timmy? Like me riding bikes with Billy. Well, evidently at least one person doesn't support that, but... Your mother, Timmy. Now, anyway, back to the point. Do you follow me so far, Timmy? Wowee, so far? The lines are so straight. Now, let's say this side of the graph represents how likely it is that any given policy might be passed into law. At the bottom, there's a 0% likelihood of said law passing. And at the top is a 100% likelihood. So, now if you think about how likely a law is to be passed, what would you say this graph might look like? Golly, I might be just a simple child, but I bet the things that are popular with everybody are very high, and the things that nobody wants are very low. Well, you're right about one thing, Timmy. You are a simple child. And most of your run-of-the-mill, average, everyday, red-blooded, all-American school children might expect the very same. But you're all woefully ignorant and completely wrong. For the world of business and politics has a few surprises for us. Jeepers, how can the world of business teach me more about how the system is screwing people over? Well, don't think of it that way, Timmy. You see, the truth is, even very unpopular policies have roughly a 3 in 10 chance of passing. And the most popular of topics well, they also have a 3 in 10 chance of passing. But if people like the policies, why wouldn't it pass? And what about the things people don't like? Why would that happen? Well, Timmy, that's where we get to a little thing called lobbying. Wow, we world of wonders, Mr. C. What is that thing you just said? Timmy, a lobbyist is a fine, upstanding, hardworking American who accepts large sums of money given to them by honest, down-to-earth, hardworking companies and billionaires to offer politicians campaign donations and even lucrative jobs to convince those very politicians what they should believe in. So it's bribery? No, it's lobbying. Corruption? Lobbying, Timmy. Now then, these lobbyists lavish money and praise on politicians, the two things they enjoy the most in life. And in turn, many unpopular policies are written by the lobbyists themselves and quickly approved by the politicians who have wisely accepted this money to better the country. But you said these policies are unpopular? Well, that's the twist. They're popular with corporations and billionaires. And that's what matters the most of all. Now that this is the same way in which many popular policies fall by the wayside. It's all just as the founders of our wonderful country intended. So how is this gonna help me? Well, Tibby, you see, all you need to do is hire a team of well-paid expert lobbyists to directly express to your mother the benefits of allowing you to go play with your friend Billy. They will heap praise and money on her and they'll craft new laws for you and everybody wins in the end. But I don't have any money, Mr. Corporate. Well, that's not really my problem now, is it? How come the horsey party or the doggy party don't fight against this? That's a donkey and an elephant, Timmy, and they accept this as the way things are and the way things should be because both parties benefit from the arrangement in the end. If it's so easy to change the opinions of politicians by using lobbyists, 
Why don't the people get together and hire their own teams of lobbyists to get those popular policies turned into law? Timmy, uh, you're just a child, and you have absolutely no clue what you're talking about. I'm just saying, Mr. Corbett, how come rich companies can do this, but regular people can't band together to get the things that they want to pass? We could all get better health care. That's communism, Timmy. Teacher says communism is actually when- Timmy, that's just not how things work in the real world if we gave everyone access to politicians. All we need to do is raise funds and give that money to the politicians to actually do the right thing for once. Then we could get better education and the drug Timmy, war. Timmy, Buying political influence shouldn't happen, Mr. C. Power to the people! Timmy, you're out of your element and I'm not having this conversation. What's wrong with your eye? I don't know, Timmy. I'm gonna go get it checked out at some point. Japers, that doesn't look right. Well, Careful there, Timmy. Uh, okay. Looks like Mr. Corporate has his eye on you. And that ficus over there in the corner. And the floor. But I have a funny feeling that little Timmy and Mr. Corporate will be back soon enough with another exciting episode of Fun and Profit.